Hello, welcome to the QPR podcast. Uh, slightly less enthusiastic intro today, but I'm sure everybody can empathise and everybody can understand with that. I'm David Fraser. We are there's four of us around the table tonight for the penultimate studio podcast of the year, and what a show we have for you! Hey, um, no interview this week. Just talking the arse out of Saturday, the previous five games, where we find ourselves and all the rest of it. I am joined by two regulars and the debutante on the podcast. Um, back after many, many, many weeks is Chris Mendes, and I no longer say ITV Sports Chris Mendes because I say... ESPN. ESPN's Chris Mendes. Welcome back. Thank you. And presumably the reason why you've totally fallen off the radar for six seven eight weeks is because you got a new job and a new boss and work friends <laughs> <laughs> kind of but also yeah. kind of you, we record the podcast in like essex now so and <laughs> i've moved further out west so it's a, a, a little essex, but, yeah. <laughs> a little harder but um but it's all good what have i missed six defeats on a, on the spin maybe i should come back like every do week you remember now. the last one that you did um, and had we won that Saturday? I'm pretty sure it was after Rotherham 5-1. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you're the lucky charm. Yeah. Um, also, making his first appearance on the podcast, Martin Durkin. Good evening. Welcome, Martin. Ellerslie, Ro- Ellerslie Road season ticket holder. Yeah, our oh, block. Yeah. And you went on Saturday. I went on Saturday. Stood. It was painful. But uh, there you go. On Saturday, we didn't used to always be in that end at Brentford, did we? No. The Bircham so. game was the other end, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah we were on the other side. And that voice you can hear, ladies and Sorry. gentlemen, is Paul Finney. All right. Hello, Paul. How are you? Oh, friggin' glorious. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get on to Saturday, um, let me tell you, the beers tonight were bought by Art of Football. Our friends at Art of Football who've uh, supported us over the years and have done various good, uh, really good QPR Prints. Um, we've got competition running with them actually for uh, the comeback kid Jamie Mackey t shirt. Which, if you look on our Twitter feed, if you retweet our tweet, you're going to the draw to win it. So, thank you very much to Art of Football. Um, for those of you who haven't listened before, you can listen to all our old episodes on our website at QPR Pod and also on our website. You can buy tickets to our live podcast, it's taking place on the 9th of May, Tuesday 9th of May, the good ship in Kilburn, we have Trevor Sinclair, we have Mark Birch and we have Kevin Garland all coming down, should be a really, really good night, so please do join us there, buy tickets on our website, qprpod.co.uk. Griffin Park, mm. Saturday the 22nd of April, who wants to talk about it? So I'm going to do what our defence did. I'm not going to turn up. <laughs> now, the only thing you can say about Saturday is that the only highlight was you called my name and I didn't hear you. I that the is grudge. true. I um, shouted at you. Did you hear me? I saw no. you looking around. I did hear something, but I'm not used to being called Paul. Right. Okay. It's always. I did say Paul. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people always either call me Finney, Finton, or something really bad um, and I mean stuff now but Saturday was I mean I went on Twitter afterwards and I got royally hammered and I don't care but it was unacceptable it's unacceptable to lose three out of four derby games against Brentford who haven't beat us in donkey's years and it's about having pride passion commitment it's all very well the experiment we get we understand we I can see what he's doing and I can see the playing players but when you know you're touched to crap in yourself and maybe falling through the back door you've got to play your strongest team you've got to put a midfield in there I mean the midfield on Saturday you, as soon as you see it in the pub that I was in you kind of knew they were going to walk through us because there's not a tackler there there wasn't anyone who was going to you know grab them and go toe to toe with them I thought if all the people could play they could do that maybe Manning would be the better option mm. but to bring goes in to do that Mm, that is a big gamble. Plus, no width. The width was ridiculous. You got Perch and you got Bidwell, who, with mm. the best will in the world, aren't exactly doors and they're leaving. I know I'm going back again. But, you know, they're not going to bump up and down the flanks. And we were getting slaughtered. 
and therefore you had Lynch as shown with the penalty I mean, the move to the penalty was ridiculous it was so damn easy mm. it was a two or three pass move they sliced it apart way too easy I haven't seen it back the penalty at the time I, I was definitely a penalty I thought oh, yeah. it wasn't a I penalty thought when I, first, I haven't seen it I, was, I thought he was lucky not to walk yeah when I first saw it I thought he's lunged at him there it could have been a red it the was. first that that one in particular was just completely rash. I don't know what he was doing. The first goal as well was just the first two goals were just. Well, my mark could have scored the first goal, and she can't even walk. You know, it's it's one of them ones. It's just like there's so much space, so much time. It's like, and also, I tell you how bad it was. I tell you how bad Saturday was. Brentford couldn't be arsed to take the piss, and that upset me. Do you know what I mean? It's like you kind of. I mean, you got to remember this is their cup final mm. without being. Big headed well, about you, ourselves. They absolutely hate us. They with the do, passion. but you say that. But it, this it feels like the first time where they're a, they're ahead of us now on on the yes, pitch. Yes, Fulham. When it's the last Brentford. time they beat us, they did a double over us in the season. I but don't think they have done the double over us this season. Well, that's, see, that, 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 that's neglect. To lose three out of four games doesn't matter who the manager is. Doesn't matter the, the board's the same. It's freaking neglect. To well, keep losing these games. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about the run in a minute, Martin. What did you were there on Saturday? What did you think? I felt that um, there was a distinct lack of width, um, which has been the case for a few games, um, and it, it was evident on on um, Saturday. I felt the defence looked really shaky. I, I had no confidence in them. The fullbacks, both of them, I've kind of run out of patience. Bidwell's going seems to be going down and down and down. Um, and when we had the ball in defence, it was either being uh, misplaced passes that was just giving the ball away or just getting rid of it, and it just looked so disjointed from pretty much start to finish, and I'm now kind of looking at it thinking, this isn't good at all, and uh, you could almost feel the people around us just willing them to try and play football, and it just didn't happen, and um, yeah, it's not good. Back to your neglect mm. point. C- carry on. Because I-, I felt like I interrupted you and you were probably onto something good there, Paul, <laughs> for once. I won't say it again. What were you- Go on. It only took six years. Um, no, because I'm sick of losing derby games. It, we, we've lo- over the years, we've lost 6 foot against Chelsea, 6 foot against Fulham, yada, yada, yada. Brentford doing the double over you. That's taking the piss. You know, we don't... Not being arrogant, you don't go to Brentford and surrender when you all you need is a point to save your season. Mm. It's ridiculous to go there and surrender it. You go there, you play your best team, you get the point, you go home, job done. Pro- then the next two games, you can experiment all you friggin' want. Problem is, like you know, every, it happens every season, and this season's the same. We've had a manager, managerial change midway through. Look at Brentford; they're quite settled. Um, I mean, looking at the team now compared to the one that started the season, it's completely different. Even looking back at this six-game run where we've lost every game, we haven't had the same four defenders start any of those games together. So, you know, you can't expect them to know exactly what they're doing, especially if they're playing different formations the whole time. I think the thing that got me was, and I'm not picking on Ian Holloway at all when I say this, but I could be wrong, but when they scored their third goal, I swear he was arguing with the Brentford fans. I don't know because I, I and, wasn't watching Ian Holloway. So something was something was going on with him in the Brentford. That was a real front. sucker punch that that third goal because you, you did you not feel like we might be back in it? <sighs> Jesus! And then that goal just puts it to bed, and you think. When well, I was a kid over. watching Rangers, we used to be three 0 down with ten minutes to go, and I'm thinking, well, it's only two and a half minutes, blah. But you always think you're in it. Yeah. There's no point on Saturday. I felt we were in it. Oh, even when we scored th- those last five minutes. Are, I so so okay. So I believe generally that there's a bit of a passion myth in football. I don't think pride, oh, commitment, on. passion wins you football matches. I think it can score you the odd goal. But I don't think generally you don't win the league with pride and passion. You win the league by having a team that's better than everyone else. That said, the last five minutes on Saturday, I was willing the players to just put out some of that body language, some signals that they really wanted to go for it. And they didn't feel it mm. from anyone. There was no one harrying them along. There was no one pushing for it. They were all down in the dumps. They didn't. Fi- That's what they, you get when no you lose five games in a row. There was no sense that they were really going to go for it. Do you know what got me? And I don't know if you guys agree with this, but you, you, you're chasing the game. You bring your sub on, which is Silla. It's April. It's an average day. It's not cold. It's not warm. It's just average. He's wearing gloves. If I'm the Brentford defender, I'm thinking, really? So you're bringing him up to rough me up? 
really. Mm. And it doesn't matter whether you bring Stiller on or you bring Shearer on or you bring Bloody Pelly on. If you've got no crosses coming in, you might as well play my ma back to her. You know, it's one of them things. It's just everything on Saturday was wrong. And it was wrong if somebody did throw some at a Holloway. That's also wrong. That shouldn't happen. I mean, I saw Ian coming off the end of the game and he was he was eyeball the eyeball kind of with the fans and the stars and everyone else in it, but he, he wasn't happy. But apparently somebody threw something, which is sadly wrong. But I kind of think we went to the beach too early. I think that's right. You, you know, and it's and again, that's a neglect. You know, until it's mathematically impossible, you stay on well, course. Is, you know, our last victory was a 5-1 win. You know, fair enough, mm. it was against Rotherham, but it is easy to get complacent when you when you win that much. It's almost, you know, at that point, you're like, there's an absolutely no way we're going to go down. Uh, and it's just gone downhill. We, I, before we Saturday, we were just losing them by one by one goal. It doesn't matter, you still get points. Explain to me, and I, I, part of me is playing devil's advocate here, explain to me how any of this can be Holloway's fault and, and I'll tell you why I'm going down this route okay we tinker okay we're changing the team every week but any combination of those 30 odd players should surely be able to get one point one point out of six games in two stretches of the season it's not like you talk about having gone to the beach the Holloway's not that sort of person I, I, I'll have a conversation with anybody that Holloway's taken his foot off the gas hasn't happened Right, Holloway hasn't taken his foot off the gas. Same with Mark Bircham. So it has to be the players. And you've got a group of players that have lost six on the spin twice in this season. And I saw a stat on Twitter, I don't know if it's true, that we've only actually lost six on the spin five times in our history. And two of them have been this season. But we, we don't, you know, we never see teams, successful teams, like throwing their, you know, mixing up so much as much as we have, like throwing in different players fine. and different formations all the time. But we That's should fine. be able to get one point out of 18, no? Okay, so once you get on a run, it can be difficult to, to reverse it, I think. I mean, to me, I think I could be wrong, but I think the last three games, he's made a half-time substitution. And that, to me, strikes of a man who's in panic mode and he's put, trying something new, it's not working, and rather than give it any longer, he's trying something at half-time. It's not, it doesn't seem to be structured in the way things are happening now. It's almost haphazard panic mm. mode. Maybe he does have one hour next season. He's trying to work out, you know, what kind of approach he's going to have for next season. But looking back on the last six games, what, what's he learned? I don't know. He's learned that basically you can tinker. Now, he says he's not a tinker man. That's fine. He says we've got to take it the chin. I have no chins left. We have lost so many derby games. You do, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you can talk. Um, it's kind of like, it's unheard of. I mean, I sound arrogant. I don't mean to. Of course, you can lose. God, we know that, don't we? We know we can lose to anyone. But... There's a certain amount of hurt in falling behind Fulham and Brentford in the pecking order of being, all right, you can argue they're middle sex, that's all petty nonsense. In West London terms now, Brentford are getting the new ground, they've got the new training grounds, Fulham are, the, the ground's better, the training ground facilities are better, everything else. We're falling behind on and off the pitch, and at some point, we've got to say, stop this and, and rebalance everything. I mean, Hasselbank, I still stand by, it needed to go. Holloway, Hughes, Redknapp... They can't all be bad. There's something wrong. There has to be something wrong. That we should not be in this position. It's like you beat Rotherham five one. You have an international break. I know. I'll change the whole team. Oh crumbs, that didn't work. Let's change it again. Oh crumbs, that didn't work. No, play your best eleven. Get your point, and then you can do what the frig you want once you're safe. To tinker on Saturday was ridiculous because we needed a point there, and there's no way that. Brentford are a better side than us on Saturday's evidence because clearly they are the beat three one. But if you can't go toe to toe with Brentford on a Saturday afternoon like that with so much at stake, then how can you motivate them players for a whole of a season? You know, this is, it's kind of, I want to give Holloway the benefit of the doubt. He's got to have a pre season. He's got to bring his own players, and we can't keep second managers because everyone's just on a bloody wheel. It's going to go nowhere. Mm. But for God's sake, don't tell us to take it on the chain. Our pride is on the floor. I was embarrassed Saturday. You know, just utterly embarrassed because I expected, foolishly, I expected better. I should know better, but I expected better. So, what now? Is anyone, I think we're all worried, is anybody seriously thinking we could go? Let you know after Saturday. <laughs> well, you know, who, you know who their last game's against, don't you? Blackburn. Yeah. Mm. And you tell me they won't lay down and die, Brantford? <laughs> 
Chance I of putting so us what, down? Their supporters, would, Brentford supporters, would want Brentford to lose that game, in my opinion. If it meant they'd lynch them, down, if they, yeah. they, they won that game and we didn't go down, they would lynch them. I'm mm. telling you, no. I, touch wood, don't want to jinx it. I think we have, I think it's a disgrace what has happened. And I think we won't massively improve between now and the end of the season. But I suspect we just have about enough in the bag. Only because Blackburn have failed to win one out of the, or win the last two games and just yeah. got draws. If they'd have won one of them games, I would be cacking got, myself. Don't forget, got tough next three game, teams right. underneath us. Birmingham, thank you, Harry. Yeah. Yeah, Forrest and Blackburn. Uh, <laughs> Forrest. <laughs> I also, looking back at that run where we, I think we won five in seven or we only lost one in seven, maybe we were lulling ourselves into sort of a false sense of hope there because if you actually look at the teams we beat, yes, we did beat Reading Cardiff, away. we beat Reading, but we also beat three teams beneath us. We beat, one of them was, um, well, Rotherham, obviously. I thought we looked good against Newcastle away as well. Yeah, yeah, we did. No, we did pick up some good results, but we beat Blackburn, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. We beat Birmingham. We beat Birmingham 4-1, 4-2. Um, that was there, it was 4-1. It's very fine margins. So we That's what I'd have those, to disagree with you. We did beat a few of the teams who are, uh, who are considerably worse than us, or su- supposedly. I think yeah, what you were saying about having you know the passion and stuff, and it, that kind of competitive edge, I think, is really important. And you see it in teams who are pushing for promotion, struggling to stay up, and then when we kind of feel like we had nothing to play for and I think that was the deciding factor really in, in our in our five six game losing streak mm. if we stay up which we should do you think the board would be tempted considering how we've been playing the last five six games to make another managerial change I don't think so I think that um, like like Paul said we've we've made so many um, Holloway ultimately has got some background in getting teams up and you know he's he needs to in, invest some hope some some confidence that he's going to do it with us and you know we've sacked so many managers after a half a season we need to give him time it's just very frustrating the way things have gone this season so first of all let me stand corrected which Paul pointed out to me whilst we weren't talking that we in fact lost to Blackburn didn't beat Blackburn um can't get it right all the time. Give, yeah, give cinnamon cup as well, didn't we? I wasn't trying to be clever, David. No, no, I just no. it's better if I it correct it. Than someone who doesn't the, love you as much. It correct saves you. all the all the te- all the tweets. Um, <sighs> all right. Someone give the case for why you should we should get rid of Holloway in pre-season. I don't think I don't think we should. Uh, I was just putting it out there as a possibility because you know the board has not been afraid to make changes when the results haven't gone our way, and they do tend to. Um, go with the fans' feeling with Hasselbank as well. There was a lot of pressure on him to go. The last straw there was a defeat to Brentford at home, and we've just had another one. Which is Ramsey's downfall as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't lose the sodden bees. I mean, the thing is, I don't know whether it's a case of making this manager that manager. As I said earlier on, they can all be bad. There's something deep rooted that's wrong. Um, perhaps. Our chairman isn't as hands-on as he should be. I don't know. I'm suggesting that. I have no evidence to back either up or not back it up. But something's wrong. You know, you can't you can't spend the money we've spent year after year bring the play. I know I know people say we've done really well cutting the wage bill, but of course we have. We've got rid of players we signed in the premiership on stupid wages and we'd be absolutely insane to replace other players. That's not business sense or, or it's a small positive. And it makes great reading, but in reality, is you're not going to do the same thing in the championship because that would be even really more stupid than what we already have been. There's the foundations need to be built in a manner that we gain not just pride, passion, but we gain respect, mm. and that's more important than anything. Is to actually go into games thinking you can win them. We're going into the games, and let's face it, we all seen that midfield on Saturday. And I'll go back to my point: we all knew that it was going to get walked on because Brentford would be up for it. You saw when they scored the first goal and how their players reacted towards our fans; they were up for the match. Mm-hmm. We scored our goal. I kind of like that in a strange way. <sighs> that the guy turned around and gave it to our fans. Well, I'm not sure. At least, at least it meant he wanted it. Mm. You, you know, from the, from a, from their point of view, you Maybe. like your players to want it. Maybe. Um, and I'm not saying our players don't. I don't believe players go out. And I believe we've got a good squad of players. I just... My, my gut feeling is... Weak? Do you think they're weak? No. Players? My gut feeling is... And I've got no evidence again. It's just it's amazing that we go a whole week and come Thursday, we replan everything with a couple of days to go and we tinker and we try something different. And to me, if you're being put out of the side, you're thinking, oh, he hasn't got any fear for me. 
Do you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, play your best team, get the points, be safe. And if you're a new manager trying to make your case, surely it's better to win as many games as you can possibly within the season that you're in charge to structure your case for next season that you're the right man. The way it is now, we're all at each other's throat. We're all, even people saying, bring back Hasselbank, Ollie's not the man. Mm. Ollie, Ollie gets us, Ollie knows us. I mean, no one can doubt Bircham doesn't love QPR. Bircham loves Rangers. We get that. But he's left himself open to be questioned, and he shouldn't have put himself in that position, in my opinion. Talk me through Saturday, someone. What, 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 what do you do? You're Ian Holloway. Martin, I'm looking at you. What do we do? Well, how do we line up? How do we play? Who do we play Saturday against Forrest? I think that he needs to... I mean, I, I thought that um, Joek and Furlong on the right-hand side were quite a promising combination um, and during our mm-hmm. period where we were starting to, to win games I thought that the overlap that we were getting the two of them worked really well together and just as that looks like you almost fixed yeah. that problem they're gone you know and that's the kind of that's the kind of issue that seems to be happening you know in other positions as well I just I don't feel that he's picking his best team like you say Paul um, and I just don't think that uh, he, he's, he's got that established, that 11, that are going to start every week. Um, on the way down to the game on Saturday, we had a game of Holloway Bingo, where we tried to name the team. Yeah. And you get a point for every player. There's six of us together, and the best score was seven. And the rest of us got six. And to me, OK, maybe we forgot one or two players, but that's not good, you know. No. Um, and we should be getting nine, ten because the starting lineup is reliable and he knows who he's picking, but I have no clue who he'll play next week. I what, really don't. What I'd hope for is, um, I mean, we don't know what goes on in training, but what I'd hope for is that he knows exactly how he's going to set up by watching the opposition tapes and he makes it clear in training by doing exercises and all the players are clear of what formation they're going to be playing. Get as many of the fans down there. Uh, so I have heard that the big difference between this Holloway and Holloway of 10 years ago or wherever it was is his research. I've heard he is, he is almost peerless in his research and, and analysis of the opposition. And maybe that's to blame. Maybe he over, apparently he is like that he, he knows to within an inch of their life the, op, the opposition and how they've played and how they've done. He, and maybe that is why he tinkers so much because maybe he overthinks it and maybe he watches so much and, and, and looks so much at them. And apparently this is kind of the net result of him watching hundreds of games a season on Sky that he's kind of thinking along those lines much more and maybe that's the reason why he tinkers so much there's also a case that the common denominator was um, Kenny Jacket in them days and you could argue that Ian would listen to Kenny Jacket where maybe Ian's got the stage now where he does it all himself and he doesn't feel he needs to listen to the person beside him which I always think is a mistake for any manager because with Clough with Taylor um, Sidby played that role at QPR for years that just to be a wee voice in the manager's ear now mm-hmm. and again and say, like, look, boss, we might have got this a bit wrong. We need to do something else. And Ian doesn't seem to me at times to take that on board, perhaps. I don't know. I'm surmising again. Because all you can do with flipping QPR is flipping and surmise yourself to death because <laughs> you, you, you've got nothing else. Your pride's in the floor. Your arse is being kicked week in a week. You're told to take it in the chin. Your chin's like Joe Bugner's. It's just a ridiculous... He was a boxer. Yeah. Young, young listeners. <clears throat> Do you know what worries me? Many years ago. Do you know what worries yeah. me about Saturday? Forest haven't won an away game in 10, I think. Uh, Thank no, I've Frigus. seen this one before. Could you imagine if it was at the city ground? You would be shouting it. <laughs> yeah. And that's not good. We shouldn't be in this position. It's ridiculous. We should be well clear of this and we should be looking for next season. And we find ourselves... I mean, if you're going to knock the ball this way long... Sorry to keep ranting, guys. I know I'm holding this podcast and I shouldn't be on this shot in a minute. Play winners. Don't just lump it from the back to Smith and their centre halves are going to stand one off him so all they're going to do is clear when you've got no one to come into it. Mm. You, you know, if, either, if you're going to do Smith in that way you've got to play 4-4-2. Mm. You have to. It's insane not to. You have two wingers, your midfield and your defence has got to be solid and you stick that plan. You can't lock no balls to a lone striker who could just head it. Especially, it's especially if we do go one goal up on Saturday so there's 20 minutes left. We can't be wide open at the back like we have been. We're creating more chances than we were on the Hasselbank but we're so much more wide open at the back. Looking at like, you know, 90% of the goals conceded on this 
uh, losing streak and they're just awful defensively really bad well, David touched on it brilliantly which was when they the sucker punch of their third goal <sighs> ridiculous you just need three minutes of stability four or five whatever hold your game just control the ball don't let them have it we give it straight back to them it's uh... was sorry I was still reeling from you saying I touched on it brilliantly <laughs> sorry <laughs> We've it's both come each other. We've been nice to each other today. If we do a podcast, no, don't be ridiculous. Sorry, Martin, did we interrupt? I was you? just going to say that you know that was one of the things that I felt on Saturday and have felt for a while is just our retention of the ball is appalling. Mm. Um, Good point. You know, we we, we just when we, when we do win the ball back, it's like a pinball machine. It just seems to possession is lost instantly with some just what look like really poor passes. Um, so that's the big thing for Holloway. He wants he wants to improve that, and that's one of his you know like the main way he sets up his teams. He wants them to play across the across the ground. Maybe that's just a side effect of him asking them to play it more. You know. Mm. Okay, I think we'll, should we leave Saturday yes, for please. now? I'm sure we'll come back to it when we. Can I just say one last thing about Saturday? Of course you can. Thank you very much. It was nice to be in Terrace again. In fairness, where on the terrace? Oh, right, okay. on the, underneath. And it was nice to kind of go there. I think they moved ground next season. Mm. And I was very proud of our fans, apart from a few instances, which you, you're going to get anywhere. But on the whole, I felt for local derby, our fans behaved brilliantly. They did back the team. All this nonsense of our fans don't back the team. They did. They were singing before the game. They properly gave it to Brentford. There's nothing more the fans can do. All this, the fans have got to do more. To be fair, if you were there Saturday, the fans mm. did all they could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're not being let down by the team, but we, perhaps they could feel something from us. They can give us back what we're giving them, which might be an idea. Let's find reasons to be positive. Anyone? <coughs> we're not in a relegation zone. Which is we're great. we're winning this battle already. Eventually I'll be bold and I won't care. Uh, you, you eventually first of all my first, uh, two points first of all eventually and yeah. second of all you will care uh, <laughs> doing right yeah, I hope you go ball too reasons to be positive well, I uh, think we, we, we won five games in a row or yeah. almost in a row we proved like you said almost in a row we, we put some what were quite good performances together during that run um, and uh, me included at that time was, was very upbeat and starting to think that we actually were getting something together for next season. So I would be hypocritical to suddenly say that we've turned into a terrible team or squad overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, so and a lot of people who've been fiercely critical of QPR in the past have said there's something coming together here. So has that suddenly gone out the window in the last five or six games or maybe we p- have potential to get something together again? but I'm worried about relegation. Seriously? Yeah. You think Blackburn can beat Villa and then go to Brentford and win? And I think if they win. beat in Villa, they will go to Brentford and win. Um, maybe I'm just being overly concerned. I, I mean, we'll come back to it later. I, I think we will be safe Saturday night, not necessarily from us winning. I th- How I many predictions have you got about the season, David? Um, let's move on. My, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, look, uh, as there was something that we, we were going to talk about, which is the work of the club in general. Um, and, and, you know, we, we've already talked tonight about the kind of culture of the club and what's happening there. But there's a lot of good work mm-hmm. that's taking place in the club. Now, tomorrow is the EFL. Oh, God, I hate that. Is it an acronym? EFL? It I sounds that. American, doesn't it? There's nothing wrong with being American, by the way. Yeah. The EFL, oh, the English, English Football, Football League. League, the English, the F, EFL Community Day of Action, which includes a team from Wales. Yes, it does. Uh, uh, two teams from Wales. Yeah, Newport. Two well done. Wales, thank you. Um, and the, possibly Crew. No, not Crew Chester. Oh, no, no, no. Carry on. They're not in it. Carry on. Carry on. The EFL Community Day of Action, which basically celebrates and sort of marks all the community um, work that clubs do. And our club has has got a lot of sort of praise and attention recently for um, a lot of the work that it's done. Now, a lot of you will remember that there was a young chap called um, James Castling who was on the Victoria Derbyshire, Derbyshire show on the BBC talking about his um, mental health issues that he had and how the QPR and the community team kind of, well, he attributes it with saving his life. Um, Tomorrow morning, so that's Tuesday morning, and if you're listening to it after 9am, this has already happened, but there's a follow-up piece on the Victoria Derbyshire show where um, 
James goes to meet uh, three QPR players, so Ned Manua, Matt Smith and Ryan Manning. And um, we had, we got a little sneak peek and we had a look at it uh, before we, we started recording tonight. And, and it was quite an eye-opener, Paul. Yeah. Um, and for, for anybody that hasn't seen it on Tuesday morning or isn't going to get to see it, uh, tell them why they should watch it on iPlayer. I think it's a case of we sometimes think a football club is 1-11. I'm quite rightly so, because that's why we go to football. But when you see the fans doing the Tiger Cubs walk, when you see that wee fella James on the Victoria, without patronising because he's a, he's, he's a decent human being and he's a, possibly braver than any footballer on the pitch I've ever seen, to go on BBC Two and bear your soul and admit that you've had your issues in life. And he's he's a hero because... To do what he's done, and I've watched that clip, and so much respect for them three players, for Nedham, yeah. for Ryan, for Matt. They let him speak, they listened, they got it. They weren't awkward. Well, no, exactly. And, and do you know what was even better? For people who have, hopefully people who watch this, um, there wasn't that... Yeah, that, they, they weren't uh, patronising him. Yeah. Yes, they took on board what he said, and they got, doesn't matter how much money they earn, or what he earns, or what they've been through, what, Everyone in life's got a journey, and I can somehow, I mean, this is my own story, it's a bit ridiculous to throw it in with someone as serious as James, but I can tell you, growing up in Belfast during the Troubles wasn't easy, and I used football to get away from a lot of things. I used to go and watch my Irish team, Glen Torn, every week, I'd go there religiously, um, and I would get football monthly, and I'd read about QPR, because that's what we had in them days, and you'd, you'd find out, you'd, you'd wait for the big match, because you used to be regionalised, and nine out of ten times when we won, the big match would be friggin' Anglia, and it would piss me off, and I wouldn't see Rangers, so I kind of get how football can, well, it's, it's true, you sit there, you don't know what... I don't, you're losing me a bit, but carry on. No, no, if you lived in Northern Ireland, you yeah. got Anglia, London up north whatever so they, you didn't get the same you didn't get London Weekend TV so normally oh okay so I got some, you I got so, you yeah, yeah, yeah. you're at the random and when I came to London you Lon random yeah <laughs> when I came to London I didn't know anyone and I went to Rangers and I made loads of friends I made friends for life and I was a shy young Irish kid who knew no one in the city and with QPR I built up friendships relationships with people and a belonging and I think I totally get where he's coming from, James, because it doesn't matter how crap we are. We can discuss it all day long. As long as QPR keep doing what they're doing with the community, we'll always be a superb football club. Mm. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and look, you're right. We go to QPR for the football, for the 11v11, for the 90 minutes on the pitch. But it does make you feel better to, to see those three players and how they reacted to James and how kind of sensitive and not awkward and grown up they were about it for want of a better word and it does make you feel well okay it isn't going very well on the pitch but at least we we seem to have a decent bunch playing for us at the moment the club seem to be doing some decent things and and and, and um it, it's a really special piece so anybody that hasn't watched it this morning or isn't isn't around to watch it it's on the victoria derby show at nine o'clock but we're presuming more, you can watch it on iPlayer player after. Sorry, David. One more thing I would like to say, and and I'm not patronising James when I say this, but I would like to see James give a speech at the PFA Awards, at every awards ceremony, if he can do it, and bring people home to the beautiful game, because the game has lost its way. And with people like James, and other clubs do it as well, I'm sure, we can find our soul again. Football's lost its soul big time, and I'd like to see James talking about this because it is a community it is about life and as he quite rightly quoted Bill Shankly it saved his and that's a brilliant message and I'm sure if a lot of premierships footballers seen that of all levels they would do nothing but stand up and applaud the fella and mm -hmm. James if you listen to this you are the bravest individual I've ever seen and so much respect for you and you're always welcome on this podcast fella whenever you feel the need please come on very good. Well, look, the, I think the club are doing some very good things. Um, so hats off to them. They also had their golf day last week. Seen Do you that? Know who won it? We we'll raised seven thousand pounds, I believe. Who won for it? Forever ours. Do you know who won it? I see that. Eighteen X players. Friend of the podcast. Uh, Lee Cook. 
Did Lee I? Cook won it. Yeah. Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Cook won it. Oh, okay. Um, and the, the winning captain, because they play it in teams, and, and, and I don't understand all the rules of these match play things, but Clive Wilson's how much? Won how much it. did it raise? £7,000. £7, can I ask you a question? the first time he's raised money for QPR, is it? Uh, <laughs> can I, can I just ask you all a question? Does anyone here play golf? I do. Yeah, right. a bit. Well, I've played it once, and I was asked to leave the course. Yeah, you, walk, you probably... Pulled your trolley across the green. I've got visions of you, you, like Adam Sandler and Happy. Yeah, Cable. I've got visions of you using your phone, pulling your driving in the buggy across the nope, green. Nope, nope. I didn't realise if you're not very good, you have to make way for people. Yeah, yeah. And I refuse to. We play okay. crazy golf for. We <laughs> anyway, so what? What is it with football and golf? What's the link? Do you um, think time? Yeah, Ooh, I mean, it's, it's a very time. it's a very time consuming game. I mean, I think people that uh, the best players I know. T- People who could play football to a good standard tend to play golf to a good standard. So, mm-hmm. in my mind's eye, I've got Matt Smith for the 18th, and our players trying to whack the ball to him. Would that be a wrong assumption? <laughs> I, I don't know. That football is generally played because they have time, because they have afternoons. But is free. it a good game? But, I don't know. It's true. Yeah, it's a good game. You oh, really? don't get a lot yeah. of footballers playing cricket, for example, and there's no reason why a lot of them would play golf and not cricket. Is it? I might try golf again. You try it. Cricket, Paul. you need quite I'm a cross lot of people. Yeah, you need 21 <laughs> need other people to play. Lessons. Yeah. I need hope, inspiration, um, and patience. Right, we're at the R's end. Not believe already. it or not. We're at the R's Have end. Have done predictions yet? No, we'll do them at the end. Anything, Paul, we've already established, gets very, very upset if he's not allowed to go last on the R's Thank end. Thank you very much. So he can go last. Anything and everything you haven't said, thought about, want to bring up, I'll kick off. Did you see a QPR fan in the national press this week? Yes. Ben Donnelly. Yes. So for, ben. Yes. So I think he, he follows us on Twitter and then we interact with him on Twitter. Here's the chap who doesn't wear shoes. Did you see this? And it got I national... Remember, I can't do that beforehand. I'm impressed that he's still, so still I, going without I shoes. I saw him. He's foot loose. <laughs> I, I saw him at, that the, was bad. at the, I think it was the Brighton game or whatever the night game was before that. And I didn't, I, I know sort of him on Twitter, but I don't know what he looks like. I'll be honest, I thought he was on Spice or, or whatever that thing is. <laughs> I thought, why is this guy hard. walking around with like shoes, with no shoes? But it turns out that he um, wears them because he's part of the barefoot movement and he feels better doing it. And he, he's been featured in all the national and international press this week. So I take it back. He is definitely of sound sound mind. And, and um, if, if you haven't seen it, we'll probably tweet the piece tomorrow. But Ben Donnelly got quite a bit of attention last week as the QPR fan who goes around barefoot. He paints his toes, doesn't he? Does he? he paints his toe now. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really yeah him. He's got a girlfriend. <laughs> he's got a girlfriend. That sounds weird. He's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he got a girlfriend. He just walked around hoping that someone wouldn't mind his feet. I, I didn't know what to make of it. And Go on. I just didn't know why what to make of it. Was, why do you think it was weird to go a girlfriend? No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of it when I saw him. Oh, it right, sort of just he goes to that, show. He got a girlfriend. Really. It goes to show that. I don't know what it goes to show. I don't know what you've got on. <laughs> Who's next? You've lost. I'll, I'll just chip in here and say if we do lose on Saturday... Um, Foot my, joke my, coming. Uh, my, yeah. <laughs> I think our defenders should just take a leaf out of his book, just play barefoot, see how it goes. Yeah. It can't get any worse. Do you know what? I actually... I mean, I don't give a rat's what anyone does, to be fair. It's not your R's end. All right. No, go on. No, but fair play to him. Why not? Who cares? Why I mean, not? Ben Donnelly, for those of you who don't follow Yeah, him. and to be fair, he plays a very mean saxophone, I'm told, so there you go. Maybe something in that. Did you just do your Oz end? That was my Oz end. Was okay. it? No, go on. That is what it's like to do a quick one. To be quick, succinct, to the point. All Try right. it sometime. Martin. Oh, it's a bit harsh, <laughs> wasn't it? Do you know what? Sometimes I feel picked on. Carry on, Martin. Martin. Uh, just to say that it's hopefully the last game uh, against Forest. Uh, we're used to the last couple of years and not a lot going on in the last game of the season. It would be nice to make sure we're safe and to actually enjoy it and to go on the pitch and it to be a real celebration. And uh, I'm hoping at some stage or other we'll stop the Holloway bingo and mm. uh, start to get a settled team. Do you think people will go on the pitch on Saturday? I mean, how do you celebrate this season? It's been a bit weird. I mean, do we go on the pitch I, with a big question mark? I don't remember a season where we've never... Yeah, we'll we'll a survival pitch, party. So we'll have, yeah. Yeah. We've been relegated and gone on the pitch, I know. Yeah. But this... All right, It'll fair happen. point. Right, ladies and gentlemen, put the kettle on, grab a hot water bottle, sit down with a drink, settle in, um, put the fire up, turn the fire up, 
relax, blanket over your legs. This is Paul Finney's Arles End. It would. Do you know what would be, you know, you know be funny? Do you know what Would you say, get a story ready for your grandchildren and you've just got married? Um, not for me to help you with your jokes. Um, I've got a very short hour's end. So that will frig you up. I believe that when I say it, yeah. Yes. Um, just to say that I thought our fans were class Saturday. They showed dignity and respect in leaving the ground. And, you know, we take it on the chin every week and maybe we're sick of it. I don't think I've done enough things about chins, but I don't appreciate being told to take things on the chin when you've lost a derby three out of four times against a team that you want to go up against and try and be competitive. Don't tell me to take it on the chin. Go out there and beat the friggers. Yeah. Yes, did that. Um, also, always remember, no matter who owns this football club, no matter who is a chairperson, I said chairperson because I'm very right on, like Stiff Little Fingers said about Alternative Ulster, Alternative Rangers, take it, change it, it's always yours. Coming in at Chris, <laughs> one minute and nine seconds, point three seven. Very good. That's a world record. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Uh, predictions if for Saturday. If you time me again, <laughs> your kneecaps are gone. Whoops. Predictions for QPR Knotts Forest on Saturday. Paul. Oh, Jesus. Do you know what? And this is true. This is this is absolutely true. I once went, I missed a Mark Allman concert to go and see Rangers against Forest at the city ground and Nigel Clough scored the fastest hat-trick ever. <laughs> You know, it's one of them things. I got dumped afterwards, but that's life. Um, Did she dump you? Oh, God, you yeah. You missed Rangers to go to a gig, and she dumped you. Oh, massively. And we lost. It was like mobile that's phones. That's a whole... That is a bad day. I didn't tell her. I just went. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't do... And I was there when Clough came on the pitch and whacked... Prediction. I don't want to. Okay. Um, I, I, I kind of hope that we are inspired and believe and realise the shit we're in and we dig ourselves out of the gutter and the toilet and go back outside the bathroom, walk towards the kitchen and build for next season. Because at the moment, I am crapping it. So I just hope we win Saturday by whatever means necessary. Cheat, dive, steal a point, just be safe. 1-0 Rangers. Martin. I'll go 2-1 Rangers. Don't let them score. We never come back when someone I, scores. I don't mind if they score as long as we score more. Chris, uh, I was point. I was going to go two one Rangers as well, but I'll be just even more optimistic and say we'll win three one, and Finney will not be dumped after the game either. It's a bit long and two for that, mate. I don't think we'll win on Saturday, but I think we will by quarter to five be mathematically safe. You think Blackburn will get Tonk to Villa? I think the the get the results are going to go our way. We've got just enough. I'm not sure we'll lose. I'll go... I, whenever I'm not sure, I go 1-1. One, one. So I'll go 1-1. One, one. Right, can I ask a quick prediction? And I'm serious with this one. I'm not going to do an hour's end. I'm going to start with you, Martin. Sorry to take over hosting the show. I know you did it. Right. Do you think Holloway will be manager this time next season? Well, given our track record of, of hiring and firing managers, my head says no, but I really hope he is, and I think he probably will be. I was going to say exactly the same thing Head says if I had to put a bet on it I'd say no but I, I really want him to do well and you know I really hope so as well if we go down which we won't he'll fall on his sword and go otherwise he'll be manager you? I will be surprised if we lose six and a spin next season at any point he'll still be here so is that yes for next season? that's uh, yes. he needs to improve his CV of wins Okay, uh, that's the end of the podcast. Our penultimate studio one for the season. Next week is the last studio one because the week after that is our live podcast at the Good Ship in Kilburn. Tuesday 9th of May, please come down. Please buy a ticket. They're only a tenner. They're on our website, qprpod.co.uk. Can I just add to that, by the way? And this is the last thing. Yeah. No, that was two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And we got crucified for that show. The podcast needs your money. It needs your help. Please come, support it. We don't make money out of it. We don't get paid. It's totally voluntary. But without you turning up and supporting it, we won't have one. So please come and support the podcast. It's as simple as that. I have nothing to add. Thank you for listening. This has been the QPR Podcast. QPR!